I'm Eliza Brown. I'm the bookstore manager at the Eric Carl Museum. And joining me today, we have Jordan Scott and Sydney Smith. Um, they Hello. have created a new picture book together. Um, and it's called I Talk Like a River. And we're really excited to talk to them today about that book. Uh, Jordan Scott is the author. Um, and he's a poet from Vancouver, Canada. And he's a recipient of the 2018 Latiner Writers Trust Poetry Prize. And this is his first picture book. And we have jo uh, Sydney Smith, and he's the illustrator of I Talk Like a River. And he's joining us from Nova Scotia. And you may know some of his other picture books. Um, they were New York Times Best Illustrated Children's Books of the Year. Sidewalk Flowers by jo John Arno Lawson, The White Cat and the Monk by Joel Bogart, and Town is by the Sea by Joanne Schwartz. And this is the first time that we've had both an author and an illustrator together for We Heart Books and Art virtual program. And I'm excited to hear a bit about of what it was like working together. I know that children's books there don't always, author and illustrator don't always talk um, and collaborate. But um, I would like to hear a little bit about what that journey was. Um, and I think this is such a beautiful book. Um, it captures so closely what fear and anxiety can feel like and that really empowering sense of overcoming it. Um, and it talks a little bit about stuttering in society and I wondered if Jordan, maybe you could start off by telling you us what inspired you to write this book and maybe tell our youngest viewers a little bit about what stuttering is, maybe if they don't know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, uh, hi everyone. And uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I will, I will explain uh, uh, stuttering a bit. Um, so stuttering is just that really, having a difficult time speaking sometimes it can it can feel like you uh run out of you uh, run out of breath when you talk sometimes it can feel like you have uh rocks in your mouth uh sometimes it can it can feel like what my uh, mom used to tell me and this is a little weird so sometimes it can feel like you have a little squirrel inside your mouth when you're trying to talk. And by that, I mean, sometimes for me, at least when I get stuck on words, my whole mouth quivers and shakes, right? So that's what stuttering is. It is a, it is a strange feeling, but it's also a very, um, interesting feeling because you really get to feel words so you get to feel how your mouth and your body create a language in a very special way because it really you really get to concentrate on all the little parts of your of your body uh, that make sounds. Um, so I was inspired to write this uh, this book because of what my uh, dad used to do uh, for me when I was a boy. Uh, when I would have a really hard time speaking, my dad would take me to um some of our our favorite uh, rivers in the town that I, I grew up in and on this one day he would take me to, he took me down there and he told me that uh, the way that I stutter the way that I speak is the same as the water moves so he pointed to the water and he said you see how that water moves that's how you speak and that was a really very cool uh, uh, moment uh, for me because I got to see uh, the world uh, stutter in the same way that I do. I got to see the river stutter in the same way that I do. And it really might be, made me uh, feel uh, less alone. Uh, so that's what inspired uh, me to write uh, the story. It's really beautiful. And I think you can really tell in the book, which 
I think really does so much service to be read out loud because you can really feel those words, like you said, um, mm -hmm. and your word choice, I think of using words that have the letter C, the letter P, the letter S, um, it just really comes across. Um, takes, you have to take a lot of time to read those words and feel those words um, in yeah. the picture book. Um, and Sydney, I wondered, what did you first think when you got the manuscript? Um, what made you want to illustrate it? Well, I was given the manuscript uh, by our editor, Neil Porter from Holiday House and well, Neil Porter books, I guess I should say. And uh, he said, take a look at this. I think, I think you'd be right for this, which is how a lot of books are usually presented um, to illustrators is someone saying, an editor saying, I think you'd be, you, you, you'd be good for this job. Um, but after I read it, I was really struck by the uh, honesty and sincerity of Jordan's story. Um, I, I, I felt like it really spoke to something very, um, very much uh, a, a thing that all, I feel like all humans sort of experience, not necessarily stuttering, but just sort of that, that kind of conflict that happens sometimes within your own mind or your body and sometimes you don't feel like uh you understand why you're you're at, you are thinking a certain way or acting a certain way or i felt like it spoke to something beyond just the the story about stuttering and and i i uh i really connected with that um and i love just the way that it wasn't really a it wasn't really teaching a lesson. It didn't change anything other than the fact that you, than, than just talking about the message of you're natural and you're, you're not broken and, and how you really just sort of sh should embrace the, the way that you, the, the way that you are. That's really great. Um, I wonder, can you tell us a little bit about their choice of, um, materials and medium that you you chose to use yeah well um i mean i i can show you some examples of early i I've, I've worked on other other books before and, and my favorite medium was uh pen and water and watercolor and so i started the sketching process for this book which is the first step in making a book is you start, start in the sketches and and find out the look of the book and how you want it to uh you know, come across visually. So uh, I did a lot of the stuff I normally do, which is like just ink sketches, um, working on a character, kind of building that up a little bit. Um, I decided that I really wanted to play around with just different textures that you can get with kind of mixing, mixing things that didn't really match. So, um, the beautiful textures that uh, that when when the the pigments kind of separate pigments is like the 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 color within the paints when they kind of separate are not fluid but they're more kind of chunky and separate and they do their own thing and it's really a beautiful thing that you're not really in control of but it's it's so beautiful the results and I felt like um, that really spoke to the theme of the book of of sort of embracing what is happening which may at first be seen as a mistake or 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 something that's uh, not not generally not right but you but the result is more beautiful than trying to control it mm -hmm. absolutely does that, <laughs> does that make kind of some sense there uh, so i mean so i ended up to your question, uh, the mediums I use, it was like traditional watercolor, but then mixed with a lot of just random things that was sort of on my, on my, I use this paste that kind of thickened it up a little bit. I use the, just like powdered pigment, which you have to be careful with because it can be toxic, but then there's um, uh, granulation liquid, which is what causes all of that kind of cool, 
um, separation of the paint. Um, and you can get into really interesting experiments, even just with adding um, salt to watercolor or something, or, or like rubbing alcohol. And suddenly you get all of these stratifications and, and um, natural things that happen within these chemical reactions that happen within the, the medium. Yeah. Which is a lot more fun than trying to control it, I think, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for this book, especially in scenes where you have uh, this feeling of anxiety, here's oh. the image um, from the classroom where uh, the character is asked to speak and he, and he can't really, I mean, uh, and then that feeling that I think almost everybody has, has of, of sort of freezing in front of a crowd. I get it all the time. And so I really wanted it to come across in the, in the image of, of like everything kind of falling apart and breaking apart and everyone sort of just sort of abstracted and everyone's just a weird faces are kind of swirling. Um, and yeah, I thought that was important for the book. Absolutely. And that image in particular, I remember seeing we had one that was on the, I think the left side of the page is like very much in focus. Yeah. And then the right side of the page is that really that shaky, almost teary, nervous feeling. Um, it just really came out with the, you know, the, the words and the illustration. Um, and I think, I think all of our readers have felt, felt that way. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there is, um, sometimes where you struggled with make in making the book, you know, kind of um, both in the writing or the illustrating where, you know, something felt like it wasn't quite right or, or kind of like this was struggling to kind of make it the way you wanted it. I'm a, I'm a, a poet as well. And when I write, uh, whether it's books or, or individual poems um, and children's books. I, I put a, a little a number sign beside each uh, draft. And that kind of helps me keep track of, um, you know, the, the uh, progression of, of, of a piece, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes my, sometimes my books are like, you know, like my last poetry book was called um, Night and Ox. And then there's a, a number sign behind it says like, you know, 342 or something like that. <laughs> uh, and for children's books, I do the same. So for I Talk Like a River, I think it was around 85, 86. Wow. So what I... So I, I find that process very exciting. Uh, that, that, that to me is where, that to me is my uh, favorite part of writing is, is going in and editing. Uh, I was stuck on a lot of images and uh, that's, I don't know really why I get stuck on certain, certain images, but uh, in this case, I guess it does make sense because it's it's this very important part of the story where uh, there's a gatefold, which is um, was just uh, very special for me because I've never had a gatefold before, and uh, and uh, a gatefold is when you have like a a fold in the in the in the pages that open up and reveal something, and this is a double gatefold, so it's both pages open up and reveal. Uh, I can even give you the example here um, it's in the book here so we have we have the character really really close up there's a lot of close-ups on the face of the character um, uh, because it's such a personal personal uh, story told within the kind of very internal voice of the character. It's very important for me to show a lot of portraits of the character. Really, it's their, it's their face. Their face is the only one you see in the book, really. I mean, you have the father, but his features aren't really 
uh, mm-hmm. filled in at all. So it's really the only actor in the book is this character, and you see the face very close up. Um, so, in that, but at this moment, uh, it's this relief, this moment of of after the, his father has spoken these these transformative words of you you know you talk like a river, um, and and it kind of it hits the character, and and it's this supposed to be this moment that like oh, it's such a uh, a release of of tension and and so anyway <laughs> you get to this part and it's this moment that's supposed to be you know it's supposed to hit you as as the experience of reading this book it's physically opening up the mind of this character and you get in and you see where the character is inside of this cleansing water that's shimmering from Dan and it's it's refreshing and it's invigorating and it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's such a beautiful moment. So at that moment, I was like, okay, this gatefold has got to be good. So I did version after version oh, wow. after version <laughs> and another one and another one and more. Is that, no, that's not even the final. And more. Until finally, I had done maybe about 20 different versions of this of this painting, and I was not happy. And it was deadline time. It was like, get those files to our art director so they can put it, you know, put the put the book together. And uh, I said, okay, fine. Sent off all of the files because I scan all of the images myself on a scanner and, you know, make them ready, send them off. And then uh, a couple of days later, the uh, art director emails me and says, yeah, we're missing this gatefold. Where's that gatefold? And I was like, oh, it didn't, you didn't get it? <laughs> and I was like, yep. I'll send it to you by tomorrow. And that meant I have five hours to do a few more versions of this painting. And then finally I, I, I settled on the final one and I was like, okay, I'm, that's it, you know. Wow. Um, I think that moment at the river is, you know, it's so profound. Um, it's that kind of revelation for that character, but also, you know, just such a kind of healing, calming moment, you know, when you get so caught up in all that anxiety. Um, and that made me think, is there like a place or something that you do when you get kind of caught up or stuck on something? Um, maybe when you're writing, Jordan, or when you're doing art, Sydney? Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, for me, I, um, I, 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 can, I usually cannot write if I'm not being uh, physical. So for me, I need to, um, I need to, I need to walk or I need to, you know, mountain bike or hike or uh, I guess over the last couple of years, I've been uh, the cold water swimming, which I find is really helpful for my process, just kind of like going in the water every other day or something. Mm. Um, And that's really the only way I can break uh, through certain uh, blocks is just to uh, try not to think and just try to be in in the woods or in the water just and that's oftentimes how how I'm able to kind of restart Mm. yeah well I uh I think exercise is really important I used to take a sketchbook to the gym yeah, right. <laughs> and I go to the treadmill and treadmill is great. I mean, it's boring, but it also means like you can, you, can, you know, you don't have, if you're running in the city or whatever, you're kind of navigating streets, stopping at stoplights and going around people and your, your brain can't really relax quite as much as when you're on a treadmill and you're just poof, do, 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 do. Yeah. And, uh, and so I would just set my sketchbook up on the, the panel, the control panel or whatever, yeah. with, with a pencil and run, 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 run. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then an idea would 
would come to me and I, I, my, I jump my legs off to the side, you know, and then like sketch, <laughs> sketch, 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 right. and then go back, run, 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 run. And the people beside me would be like, lie down. For right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I thought maybe one last question would be to ask you what you might say to um, our young aspiring writers and illustrators um, and you know if you recommend anything or um, what could inspire them to be creative and make their art. Uh, Sydney, do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I, you know, I when I was younger, I wasn't uh, particularly uh, good at drawing. Um, I wasn't one of the kids in the class that that you know was the drawer. There was actually a kid named Rusty in my class who drew a, a pretty amazing uh, Garfield. And I just kept on being like, oh, that Rusty, <laughs> he's so good. And I would steal, I would be like, oh, I like how he does his sons. Or I like how my, my neighbor who sat beside me, Rachel, she always had really good way of, of drawing houses. And so I would, you know, steal her ideas and, and stuff. Um, but the thing that happened to me was that I never stopped having fun with drawing. Drawing became a very important part of who I was because it, I needed it as a thing. Um, it was a safe place for me. It was a place I could go and I could really like um, immerse myself in it. I could really like, I drew superheroes quite a bit. I drew monsters all the time. Uh, and then from there, people were like, you know, why don't you try paints? And so I tried some paints. It was always uh, something that I, I just never stopped having fun. Mm. And, and um, I think it's important for kids to really try not to be so hard on yourself. At a mm. certain mm. age, every young mm. person who draws, everybody draws when they're a kid, everybody. It's because it's a game, it's fun. And at some point, at some point, we all say to ourselves, that's, you know, we're not good at this. Or I, that's, not, that's not what I wanted to, that's not as good as I wanted to be, or I can't draw horses or whatever. I can't draw horses. I can't draw cats. I learned that the hard way. I did a book on, on a, about a cat and I learned very quickly that I can't draw cats. But I still had an amazing time doing it. I had fun and that's what's important is that, is that you just keep on having fun, carry around a sketchbook all the time. If you're on a bus, you're waiting somewhere, you can open your sketchbook and sketch things, sketch people, sketch whatever you want. You always have something to do if you have a sketchbook and go to art galleries or uh, look at art books, look at how people did things. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I think, the, yeah, just have fun. Just keep on having fun. Stop mm -hmm. being so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I agree. I think that's, I think that's really good advice. I think that that can be the most uh, difficult part of writing um, is you, you are very hard on yourself or you can be very hard on yourself. And I always like to, um, I always like to embrace a, a failure in a way. I, I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a very good thing. I think that if, for me at least, I think when I write something, I feel really inspired. I write something, I think this is great. I get up the next day and I, read it again I don't like it I think as I've gotten older I can I can I can I can say well that's okay because that is a part of the process sometimes what I like to do is I like to look at writers that that I really admire and even if you just google like sometimes I used to google like for example uh JK uh, Rowling's manuscript if you just put that into Google and you will see how many times she 
had to write a page before it was published. And I think sometimes that, you know, you know, people think that uh, writing happens just magically. Like you sit down, you write something, you publish it, you're famous, that's it, right? But behind the scenes, there's just so much work that goes into it and so much failure. And I find that quite beautiful because it always, it always makes you, it always makes you move into uh, different parts of your mind and different parts of your ability. And I try to em em embrace that as the fun part. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Uh, and I really enjoy that. And I think that that would that would be my advice for young writers is have 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 fun with that have 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 fun with doing it again take take joy in that um and also uh read the dictionary read the whole thing have your parents go out and buy you one of those giant oxford dictionaries they'll know what it is Mm -hmm. and just take a year or so and just read it read read all of it it is it'll change your life it's so cool well i thank you so much both of you for joining me um for the viewers i would like to um tell you that you can buy a copy of i talk like a river um in the carl museum bookshop it's a shop.carlmuseum.org we might even have some signed copies available so check it out um, and thank you again to Jordan and Sydney. We're really excited yep. to have you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you. It's a pleasure.